But Justin frowned. Do we still have a chance? If things go on like this, I'm afraid that Barry will really take over the company. Then what about you and me? Even if he is not such a person, Natalia is beside him and is scheming. That's why we can't rush, Marie said, squinting her eyes. If we rush now, it will be like giving them an opportunity. Understand? And we still have a chance. If you think about it, just as you suspect, if Barry is really planning something, we can always find out if we try to. And don't say anything to your father when it comes to Natalia. Although they couldn't figure out what Barry was planning, Marie thought that it must be a good chance for them. How will we find out? Justin at this time began to trust Marie and asked eagerly. Marie frowned and said in a deep voice, Let me think about it. The bad thing is that we don't have any contacts in the Sinclair Corporation. What's more, your father made it clear that he didn't want us to do anything. Therefore, if we start without preparation and are discovered by your father, we will both be completely abandoned. With that, she turned around and took a serious look at Justin. This time, we must think clearly about what we want to do. We can't be as impulsive as before. Understand? Faced with such a situation, Justin immediately became nervous, so he nodded. Okay, don't worry. I will not be as impulsive this time. He clearly understood what his mother meant. This may be their last opportunity against Barry. If they lost, it would be a complete disaster, and there would be no chance to start over. But if they won, no matter what Barry did, it would not be of any use. That is to say, the most important thing for them now was to find out what Barry was planning. That night, Marie had a nightmare. She dreamt of Cheryl. Marie had first seen Cheryl in a magazine. She was famous for her unique beauty. Compared to her, even the most beautiful women looked insignificant. But when she saw Cheryl in person, the shock brought by her appearance and temperament was even greater. She was speechless. She could only look at Cheryl like she was an angel. From that time on, Marie knew one thing, that Carl would never leave his wife. So if she was unreasonable or arrogant, she would be the one who would be abandoned. Therefore, Marie never made any demands on Carl, but played her part carefully. But she was also human. If she was by herself, it wouldn't matter if she had a place in Carl's life or not. But it was different with Justin. She couldn't bear to have a son who would grow up like she had, always hiding in the shadows, especially when she saw what a good life Barry had. Marie began to feel reluctant. Although she cannot compare with Cheryl's elegance and appearance, she was still worthy. Would she let her son be inferior? Therefore, the more Marie thought about it, the more determined she felt. She longed for Justin to be respected just like Barry so she hatched her own plan. When she woke up from her nightmare, Marie saw a scene that she had pushed out of her mind. She had seen Cheryl looking at her in the eye. Her beautiful face was in pain, looking into Marie's eyes to let her know she could never forget. When she woke up, Marie was panting, pale and shivering. She closed her eyes, trying to make the scene she had just seen disappear from her mind. But every time she closed her eyes, the scene became clearer, which made Marie realize that she had never forgotten this in all these years. That night, she and Carl had killed Cheryl. Marie's chest was heaving. She took a deep breath, tried to calm herself down, and kept reminding herself that these things were over. In this world, apart from her and Carl, no one could know about it. Moreover, she had absolute confidence that Carl would never betray her. Because the two of them were tied to each other, Carl had always protected her over the years. No one could come between them. In the eyes of others, their marriage was their happy ending. Most people thought that Carl was really good to her, but Marie knew that Carl could not leave her, not only because of their many years together, but also for another more important reason. It was because the two of them had killed Cheryl with their own hands. The secret was kept hidden by them. However, Marie would still dream about that night from time to time, especially in a situation like this, when she suddenly got the news related to Cheryl. Wasn't it ironic that Barry had asked her to help prepare the ceremony for the 10th anniversary of Cheryl's death? 
Was this not to remind her that it had been 10 years since the murder, and her murderers were still out there, living their lives? Marie was not a cold-blooded killer. She was feeling guilty. So over the years, she did not want to hear anything about Cheryl. She took a deep breath, turned around and took a deep look at Carl, who was lying on the bed next to her. Unlike her, he was sleeping really soundly. Even though she had been awakened by a nightmare, he knew nothing about it. She and Carl were still on the same side. However, if one day Carl stood opposite of Justin, she would not hesitate to expose all the secrets of these years. When Barry came to the Sinclair Corporation, he first dealt with the matters at hand and then took out a tightly packed folder, which contained all the projects carried out by Sloan's company in recent years. It was obvious from these documents that Sloan's plans had been going very smoothly. No one had thought to investigate how he had made his fortune. People who saw him were met with the strictness of his eyes. If Barry didn't know anything about him, when he saw this list, he would agree with the idea of cooperating with him. But now Barry was frowning. He didn't think that Sloan was really a genius investor. Since he had cooperated with Carl and still used the method of involving innocent people to attack his opponents, how could such a person work honestly to gradually make his company what it was now? It was impossible. So Barry took a close look at everything and found that Sloan had cooperated with almost all of the large groups in the country, except the Sinclair Corporation. To avoid suspicion up to this point, it could not be said that there was really no business relationship between Carl and Sloan. Sloan's ambition was not small. Otherwise, he would not have achieved such big success at the present stage. However, even with such great ambition, he did not seek to cooperate with the Sinclair Corporation, the largest company in the city. How was this possible? However, all that was Barry's guess. He frowned, dialed a phone number, explained something, and then hung up. What's the matter? Do you have any issues? Natalia finished her work and saw Barry's frown, so she asked in a low voice. Barry looked at her and shook his head. I can't tell you right now. I hope my guess is correct. Then he said, Are you finished? What would you like to have for dinner? In fact, Natalia had no appetite at all. She didn't even care about eating until she could find out all the relevant evidence. And now she felt worried when she thought about it. Even if she found an issue on Sloane's side, and then she found the evidence they wanted, what should she do about the Thompson family? If they only investigated the affairs of the Ortez family, they would still give Carl a chance to escape. They had to find out the truth as they had planned and everything should be announced on the 10th anniversary of Cheryl's death. However, Natalia also knew that she would just put more pressure on Carl by saying these things. After all, Barry knew these things better than her. In this case, he only talked about dinner because he was worried about her. Without her around, Barry would have been at his desk 24 hours a day, waiting for any news, speculating, and planning. Well, I seem to be a little hungry. Why don't we go home and I'll make something for you? Natalia said softly. Barry raised his eyebrows and showed a small smile. Of course. Natalia bought all the necessary ingredients and then cooked them together with Barry. After all, neither of them was in a mood to go out, but they still had to eat. When they had dinner together, it was the only time they could relax during the day. Therefore, Natalia deliberately did not talk about work matters at the dinner table. I overheard people talking about me when I picked up some coffee today. Guess what they said? Natalia smiled, her eyes squinting. Barry looked at her deeply. Was it a good thing? Of course. Natalia nodded. Forget it, I won't let you guess. I heard those saying people that they thought I came to the company with ulterior motives. But after cooperating with me for a period of time, they found that my abilities were very good and not at all inferior to people who had worked there for more than 10 years. How about it? I am doing great. I didn't embarrass you. Barry raised his eyebrows. How could you embarrass me? I have always been proud of you. Me too. Natalia was very happy and smiled. I also heard them talk about you, praising how good you are. I'm still very happy. Do you see? When I was listening, I thought... This is my love. This is the person who is with me every day. 
I am so happy. When she laughed, her eyes squinted, and she looked very cute. When Barry looked at her, he felt that Natalia's smile was making him happy. It was sweet and soft, making the anxiety in his heart disappear. He felt that he had become relaxed. I am the happiest person because I am with you. Natalia smiled gently. Barry touched her hair. Me too. After dinner, they sat together in the living room. Barry spent most of his time sorting out the documents related to the project. Although the investigation and the evidence were very important, he also spent a lot of time on the project with the Parker Corporation, and he was very meticulous and careful. This time after dinner, Barry received a phone call. He frowned and quickly picked it up. All right, send it to me now and I'll see for myself. After hanging up the phone, Barry quickly closed the open documents on his computer and opened the files he had just received. Natalia saw his expression and knew that this matter was very important, so she sat up straight and held her breath. She didn't dare to ask any unnecessary questions for fear of disturbing Barry. Barry, on the other hand, was absorbed in this document. Soon he pulled up another one. He looked at the two documents next to each other. His brow wrinkled and his face took a complex look. After a while, Natalia whispered, Did you find anything? May I look? Barry glanced at her, pointed at the two documents, and quickly explained, These are all the investments that Sloan has made so far. The ones marked in red have been successful. You can see that his success rate reaches 90%. These are the businesses of the Sinclair Corporation over the last few years. Compare the time frames. Under his instructions, Natalia quickly looked at the two documents, and when looking at Sloan's investments, she had to feel that he indeed had a talent. But after looking at the other document, her eyes immediately widened, and it was obvious that she had seen something incredible. This... Natalia couldn't believe her eyes and looked at Barry. Am I reading this wrong? Have they actually been cooperating? If these two documents were not put together, there was nothing strange about them. The key was to put them together. The investments made by Sloan were almost the same as the ones made by Carl when he was in power. And there was no time difference between Sloan's investments and the projects of Carl. In other words... Sloan cooperates with the Sinclair Corporation and invests in it. During these projects, investments with huge profits were made by Sloan. For the Sinclair Corporation, the profits from these projects also consolidate their rare position in the market. A couple of them could be a coincidence, but this had been going on for several years in a row. So how could it be a coincidence? After Natalia finished reading through the documents, she felt a cold sweat running down her back. If they hadn't found out about Sloan, they wouldn't have known. However, there seemed to be no intersection between Carl and Sloan. So how were they constantly cooperating? It can be seen that Carl was testing the water to make sure the return on Sloan's investments could be so high. Before Sloan invested, Carl would make use of the Sinclair Corporation or its branches to carry out a series of projects with that company. And Carl held a lot of shares in Sloan's company. Barry analyzed in a serious voice. Fortunately, they had found out about Sloan. Otherwise, they would have been in the dark. I have checked that Carl has had no public interaction with Sloan. They seldom attend events together. Even if they did, they barely spoke to each other. Barry frowned and said, To want to avoid suspicion, there must have been a deeper cooperation between them. I have asked someone to compare the equity distribution of Sloan's company and Carl's own asset distribution to see if we can find something deeper. He and Natalia looked at the files on the computer again. Although they had found out, it could all be a coincidence. In the absence of any evidence, everything could be dismissed. Therefore, now they had to confirm that Carl was indeed working with Sloan. But at least the direction of their investigation was completely correct. Natalia took a deep breath. Before, I was a little confused. But now I am not. You see, we are slowly digging out all those things. As we investigate more and more deeply, we will find out more things that we don't know. Barry raised his hand and placed it on her shoulder. It's true. So our mentality has to be stable and we can't be affected too much. 
Originally, Barry wanted to find a certain time frame to prove the reaction between Carl and Sloane, but he didn't expect to actually get a chance. The first half of the financial year was over. In addition to reporting on the business of the first half of the year, all companies would also start to hold dinners to give their CEOs a chance to meet each other and to facilitate further cooperation. Barry was hesitant to attend, but when he saw that Sloan was on the guest list, he immediately agreed. Then he went to the Sinclair family home. You're back? Marie had the same expression as always and poured him a glass of water with a smile. Your father is upstairs. He will come down soon. Have a seat. Right after she spoke, Carl came downstairs. Are you looking for me? Carl's face took a surprised look. Barry nodded and said in a calm voice, Have you heard about the upcoming charity banquet? Someone has given me an invitation. You are the representative of the Sinclair Corporation, so I think you should go. Me? Aren't you in charge of the Sinclair Corporation now? Although he said that, Carl's face showed a satisfied smile. I've heard of this banquet. Many people will be there. Entrepreneurs who have made significant achievements in recent years will be included, as well as important families of the city. It would be a waste if I went. It's better for you to go. Talk to people. Make some friends and secure future corporations. Barry raised his eyebrows. Why don't we go together? After a brief surprise, Carl immediately nodded. Yes, we could do that. But how do you feel about going with me? We've never been to any event together before. Barry said with a smile. I just think it's still a little early for me to represent the Sinclair Corporation on my own, and there will be a lot of your old friends here. It would be good to take this opportunity to meet them. As for me, I will meet people and make friends, as you said, to secure corporations for our company. Carl's smile on his face was getting deeper and deeper. You are growing more and more sensible. Okay, that's it. I'll go with you. Standing on one side, Marie was looking at the two father and son who seldom had a smooth conversation and frowned. If Barry kept doing so well, Carl would want to give the Sinclair Corporation to him in the future. Maybe at that time, Barry would take over everything. But when she looked at the two people again, she immediately put on a smile. However, the tension in her heart did not dissipate. On the contrary, when she looked into Barry's eyes, she felt that she could not have guessed wrong. How could Barry have no idea? When looking at her, Barry was not as indifferent as before, but had a faint smile. How could Barry smile at her? This made Marie's heart worry and she could hardly control her expression. What's the matter with you? Carl frowned and looked at the frowning Marie. Marie put on a smile again and said in a soft voice, It's just so good to see the two of you talking so happily. I feel very content. In the future, you should come home more often, Barry. Although your father doesn't say anything about it, he really misses you very much. Carl was very satisfied with all this. After all, what he cared about the most was his status. If Barry hadn't informed him and had gone alone, he would have been dissatisfied, but he would not be angry. But now, that Barry had personally brought him the invitation, how could Carl not be satisfied? He was so excited that he forgot to check who else was invited. The next night was the night of the banquet. This time, after half a year's hard work, the people in charge of various companies in the city finally found a nice occasion to meet each other. Although they were old friends, meeting at such an important banquet was very important to them. It was also convenient for them to discuss their plans for the second half of the year and find suitable business partners. Of course, that night, Barry was the most famous and expected guest. After all, he had been in charge of such a large project the Sinclair Corporation's profits from this project were the envy of everyone present, and they were still in cooperation with the Parker Corporation. Therefore, those who were invited, especially those of the same age as Barry, envied that he had been able to achieve such a large cooperation at a young age. They wanted to establish a good relationship with him so that they could get in touch and further cooperate with the Sinclair Corporation. The Sinclair Corporation was an example for everyone in the city. Carl arrived first. Although he was nearly 60, he looked much younger because of his energy. In addition, he was very excited to attend the banquet. 
After entering, many people gathered around him. He enjoyed the attention very much. Carl was admired by many people because of his painstaking management of his image. Therefore, when people came to greet him, they were respectful, and their words were full of compliments. While Carl was enjoying the occasion, Natalia was in the car, too nervous to get down. Do I really look good in this? Natalia looked at her gown. She looked nervous, so she always held Barry's hand. She didn't intend to come to the party today, but Barry had wanted to take her with him, so she reluctantly agreed. In her whole life, Natalia had never attended any such important occasion, let alone meeting all the powerful people of the city who would be there. She was not worried about making a fool of herself, but was afraid of embarrassing Barry. Natalia looked at herself in the rearview mirror and took a deep breath. But Barry's eyes are full of amazement and admiration. I regret bringing you here, Barry suddenly said. Natalia's heart sank. She was disheartened and said, I've already said that it was not suitable for me to come here. Do you think it's not difficult for me to attend such a party? She wanted to get out of the car, but Barry suddenly took her hand, put it on his lips and gently kissed it. I regret it because you are so beautiful today that I don't want others to see you. I just want to have you all to myself. His eyes were full of love. Natalia was wearing a black dress carefully selected by him. The square neckline showed off her delicate collarbone and white skin. The dress was decorated with diamonds, which shone delicately. Natalia's hair was long. It was held back by a delicate beret with the same diamonds as her dress. Her facial features were exquisite. With her delicate makeup, she looked like a princess. She was beautiful and charming, making Barry yearn for her. Barry was charmed by Natalia, so he kissed her soft lips. You should follow me closely, all right? Natalia's face showed a happy smile. The tension was completely relieved by Barry's sweet words. She said with a light smile, I'm still worried about this. When we go in, you must hold my hand and don't let go. Of course, in my heart, there is only you. Barry took her hand and they got out of the car together. When they arrived, the party had already begun to be lively because there were a lot of people there who rarely had the chance to see each other. Carl was the center of attention. Many people could not help but want to talk to him about business on this occasion. Just then, however, the door to the banquet opened. Natalia held Barry's hand, took a deep breath, and walked step by step with him towards the people. Sure enough, when they came in, everyone stopped discussing, and all their eyes fell on the two of them. Although the lights were shining brightly, no one could deny that these two people were shining even brighter. Barry wore a black suit, and he looked very good in that color. Coupled with his fierce eyes, he immediately became the most eye-catching man in the room. And as for the woman next to him, although those present did not know her identity, they all agreed that they seemed to be a perfect couple. They looked very compatible. Who is this woman? I have never seen Barry with her before. What's more, she looks so beautiful. Is she the daughter of some noble family? I don't know. I've never seen her either. But were Barry and Madeline not engaged? Why is she not here today? And did you see the way he looks at her? His eyes were so gentle just now. So after everyone was surprised, they all looked at Carl, who was standing in the middle of the crowd. One of them asked him, Carl, is there a new love interest in Mr. Barry's life? We haven't seen that lady before. Who is she? Carl's face was a little stiff, but in front of so many people, he did not dare to show his annoyance. So he reluctantly put on a smile and whispered, This is the daughter of an old friend of mine. Although the Orges family had also been famous back in the day, most of the people at the banquet were representatives of companies that had developed in the city in recent years. In addition, Pedro's death had been associated with bad business. Carl, in order to build his image as a loyal friend, would mention Pedro and express his regret. But now that this was no longer needed, Carl wanted to draw a clear line between them, so he did not go into detail about Natalia's background. Is that so? So they are childhood sweethearts? This is really romantic. Some people sighed. 
but Carl only smiled reluctantly. All his previous complacency disappeared when he saw Barry bringing Natalia to such an occasion. What was Natalia's role in this? Did she deserve to be there? Carl was very angry, so his face became more and more stiff. He had been very satisfied with Barry's every action until then, but Natalia was like a ticking bomb. She made him think of the events of the past every time he saw her, and he could never really forget. The older a person got, the more things about their past did they want to keep secret. Carl had dreamt about Pedro several times and had nightmares that he had made him pay for what he did in his life. Therefore, when he saw Natalia, his mood sank. Barry walked around with Natalia and greeted people. He turned to look at Carl. As soon as he came, his aura was so strong that people around him wanted to get close, but they didn't dare, so they could only step back. There you are. Carl put on a smile, and then he took a quick look at Natalia. In this situation, Natalia seemed to know nothing, so he wanted to hide his nervousness and guilt and not give himself away. At this time, the commotion caused by Barry's arrival started again, and the gate opened once more. Carl's expression changed rapidly when he saw the guest who had arrived. He subconsciously looked at Barry and Natalia beside him, However, it seemed that they had not perceived anything, and their expressions were completely natural. Did he imagine this? Carl quickly concealed the surprise on his face, and carefully observed the faces of the two people next to him. It was Sloane who had just arrived. He and Sloane never had any contact in public, and they would always avoid suspicion. But this time, they were meeting in front of Barry and Natalia. Before that, they would always arrange things in advance to make sure that only one of them would attend. But this time, Sloane probably thought that he was no longer in charge of the Sinclair Corporation's affairs, so he would not attend such functions. However, he did not think that Barry had invited him, and they were both surprised. Wait a minute. He was personally invited by Barry. So could it be that Barry had deliberately arranged this? Carl's heart was heavy again. He was tormented by this constant doubt, and he was always thinking if Natalia was not present in Barry's life, things would not be like that. He thought less about himself and his actions. Under this kind of torture, he hated Natalia even more deeply. Sloane had also seen Carl. At the moment when they looked at each other, the surprise flashed quickly in his eyes, and then he walked quickly to the side. But at this time, Barry suddenly stopped him. Sloane, please wait. Barry's voice rang in Sloane's ears. People were watching, so he had to stop. Carl frowned and clenched his fist hard to keep his emotions from being exposed. At this time, he looked at Barry and wanted to know clearly what he wanted to do. Why did he call the name of Sloane in front of him? Was this intentional? Carl was full of worries, but he had to force himself to calm down. After a few seconds, Sloane turned around with a cool smile on his face and walked over. Sloane was a good-looking man, and he was very active for his age. Barry had checked his background and knew that he had not always been straightforward. However, Sloane now didn't show any shadow of the past. Anyone who saw him would think that he was just a successful businessman and had no secrets about his past. Mr. Carl, Mr. Barry, so nice to see you. Sloane smiled naturally, had a kind expression, and looked very easygoing. I have been planning the second half of the company's year, and I am ready to get some targets. I have reviewed all previous cooperations and found that we have not cooperated in the past, Mr. Sloane. So I would like to take this opportunity to have a talk with you and see if you are interested in cooperating with the Sinclair Corporation in the following semester. Barry calmly asked. Compared with Carl's stiff look, he seemed ready to do business. Sloane had a surprised look. Is that so? That would really be my pleasure. After all, Mr. Barry, you are now a famous businessman in the city. How could I refuse to cooperate with you? Thank you for your kind words. Barry took a look at Carl and said, Father, Mr. Sloane is a genius in the investment field. If we can cooperate, both companies will get great benefits. Am I right? Carl nodded. 
Of course, I've been hearing of Mr. Sloan's name for a long time, but I didn't have the opportunity to meet him before, so I have not cooperated with him. My company was too small to approach the Sinclair Corporation, but since Mr. Barry asked me, I will do my best. Sloan's attitude was very natural. Judging from the look on his face, there were not any hidden thoughts. Barry pretended to think for a second, and then said, Soon I will send my team over to Mr. Sloan with a business plan, hoping that we can cooperate. The two men shook hands and then Sloan left. After he left, Carl immediately frowned and asked, Why do you want to cooperate with him all of a sudden? The Sinclair Corporation should expand its activity in the city. Sloan is a good choice of partner. His investment choices are very precise, and I have checked his previous activity. We haven't cooperated with him over all these years. Father, is there anything I don't know? It's not in your character to turn down good business. Barry pretended to be confused and looked down at Carl, hoping to get an answer from him. Carl thought for a while and said, That's because you don't know anything. He took a look at Barry and did not see any strange expression on his face. Because of my temper in the past, I didn't have much communication with you and do not know a lot of things. But now, Father, you can tell me about the things I don't know in case I need them in the future. Barry's attitude was very flattering, which made Carl feel comfortable. It's true that there are some things that you may not know about. Carl looked in the direction of Sloan, who deliberately avoided them, and had quickly found another group of people to talk to. After a while, he said, the truth about Sloan is not so impressive. Although I have no evidence, this man is not as honest as you think. Do you think I'm stupid? If he was so good, would I not have cooperated with him? If Carl didn't pretend to trust Barry, how could he persuade him to trust him in turn? Barry made a sudden realization. This was my mistake. I did not understand the things going on in the background. Father, I was lucky to be with you this time. You really helped me make the right choices. You are young. There are many things to learn. Carl said quickly. Barry took a respectful look. In the future, before I make such decisions, I will ask for your opinion first and will not easily trust anyone. That's right. Don't forget that the Sinclair Corporation does not need temporary interests, but rather long-term development. So regarding Sloan, I advise you to give up the idea of cooperation. I don't think that the Sinclair Corporation should have any connection with such people. Carl confidently expressed his opinion. He thought that Barry would retort and he didn't expect him to quickly agree. Father, you are right. You can rest assured I will act according to what you said. Carl had been terrified all that time. Now he finally relaxed. The banquet went on smoothly. Barry was quickly surrounded by many people, one by one wanting to get to know him. Even Natalia was surrounded by people. To deal with all these conversations, Barry had to quickly adapt. He had to be thinking carefully and will not say the wrong thing to anyone. Everyone was treated with absolute courtesy by Barry. Mr. Barry, would you like to introduce your friend to us? This is the first time you've appeared as a couple in public. One of the businessmen, Dean Dowdle, couldn't help asking. As soon as he spoke, everyone else agreed. Barry raised his eyebrows, held Natalia's hand and said with a smile, She is Natalia, my girlfriend. Natalia couldn't help being nervous when Barry announced their relationship in front of everyone. But Barry looked into her eyes, giving her confidence. So she lovingly held Barry's hand. Everyone was excited because of Barry's announcement. Although there were doubts in their hearts, no one dared to ask about what was going on with Madeline. Someone quickly asked, This young lady has never appeared before. How did you two meet? Barry seriously replied, Natalia has been by my side for a very long time. As for her background, one day I will let you know everything. As for now, let's talk about business. Barry skillfully changed the topic. Natalia took a deep breath and looked at him with a faint smile. Even among all those people, being with him was the most dazzling experience. Barry had really changed a lot. Natalia did not know whether this change was good or bad, but now it seemed that it was a good thing. 
Later, Barry took Natalia by the hand, and the two of them quickly walked to a corner. Are you hungry? Barry took two pieces of cake and put them on Natalia's plate. He said softly, Have some. Natalia laughed and said, You have some as well. I'm not very hungry. Well, Barry took a quick look at Natalia and said softly, Would you mind if I didn't tell people about your identity right now? Would I mind? Natalia frowned. Why would I care about this? In fact, it doesn't matter whether you introduce me or not. I won't care about it, and you should not be too sensitive. Natalia really didn't care about such things. What Barry said and did, she would respect and understand, because she knew that he only wanted what was good for her. Barry took a serious look at her and said in a low voice, I just want to let everyone in the city know that Pedro was taken advantage of, and that the Ortez family has not done anything wrong. I will when the truth about the Ortez family is exposed. At that time, I will also tell everyone that you are so excellent because you are Pedro's daughter. Natalia looked at him in surprise, and she was moved. She hadn't thought of this at all, but Barry had. He always put her first and thought of her in every situation. If you talk about it now, it will only lead to constant speculation. I don't want you to have to deal with those things. Barry gently stroked Natalia's head. I think everything you do is the best. When they came here today, Barry thought that Natalia was dazzling. If it wasn't for the things Carl had done, the situation of the Ortez family would have been better than that of the Sinclair family. Natalia would have been the center of attention. She would have been admired by everyone. She would be the princess of the Ortez family. She would be spoiled by her parents. But all of this was destroyed by Carl. Now it was the first time for Natalia to attend such an event. Her life had been completely destroyed because of the bankruptcy of the Ortez family, and there had been no suitable occasion for her to show herself. Barry was distressed and regretful, so he wanted to let Natalia expose the truth about the Ortez family as soon as possible and get everything that she deserved, regardless of the consequences. On the other side, Carl received a strange phone call after he left. He hesitated for a moment and then picked up. What's going on? Why did your son talk to me all of a sudden? The voice on the other side of the phone was obviously Sloan's, but it was no longer as polite as it had been at the party. It revealed his tension. Calm down. What are you nervous about? If anything really happens, would I not let you know in the first place? Carl tried to calm Sloan down, although he was also scared. He still had to pretend, so he said. I talked to him. He just wanted to cooperate with you. There is no other meaning. But Sloane didn't believe him. Are you sure? What if he has found something? And the woman he brought with him today, if I'm not mistaken, was from the Ortez family? We've talked about this. You had to get rid of the mother and daughter of the Ortez family. She could cause trouble in the future. Don't you worry that she will find out the truth? These words rang true in Carl's heart. This is what he had long been afraid of. Do you think I didn't think of that? She knows nothing. Calm down. Besides you and me, who else could find the evidence? Over the years, we have had no interaction at all. How can Natalia find out about you? It is impossible. You should not worry about this. Carl was not willing to back down. Compared with blindly jumping to conclusions, Carl wanted to calm down and observe the progress of things. If Barry didn't know anything at that time, he would not be exposed because of his nervousness. Anyway, I want to be completely certain about this. You can figure out what we should do and let me know. I won't cooperate with the Sinclair Corporation. You'd better persuade your son to give up this idea. Sloan said indignantly and abruptly hung up the phone. Carl was in his car, frowning tightly. He could feel that Sloan's nervousness and fear were not unreasonable. No matter whether it was the Ortez family, the Thompson family, or countless other small enterprises after that, he had cooperated with Sloan for such a long time and had never worried about being discovered. They were powerful enough that even if people ever found out, there would be no evidence. People could only watch them become more and more powerful. But now both he and Sloan were old. 
Because they were old, they had become nervous, afraid that the secrets of the past would be found out. What happened with the matters I asked you to investigate? Carl asked in a deep voice. Mr. Carl, I have investigated all of them. During his term in office, Mr. Barry did not do any irrelevant work, and basically all of his time was devoted to company projects. Except for the incident with Miss Natalia, there was no suspicious movement. A man said quickly on the phone, Okay, keep investigating. Whatever you find, let me know as soon as possible. Carl hung up. He had managed to relax a little, but he began to worry again after he took that call. He couldn't afford to be exposed at all, let by his own son. Carl's face was wrinkled in worry, constantly thinking of a better way to handle things. On the way home, Barry recalled the looks of the two men at the banquet. Carl was obviously uncomfortable, but Sloane was calm and polite. I think the reason why the two of them had managed to work in secret for so long must be that Sloane has evidence against Carl in his hands. Similarly, Carl must also have evidence against Sloane. Only interests can tie two such shady people together, Barry said quickly. That is to say, what they wanted might be in Sloane's hands. Natalia's expression was not relaxed at all, but was extremely heavy. But how do we get it? Since this is related to their lives and reputations, it will not be handed over to anyone, and we have nothing to do with Sloan. If we insist on cooperating, we will only scare him away. This evening, it was as if he didn't want to have anything to do with us. Sloan would never hand them the evidence of Carl's crimes, so they had to think of another way as soon as possible. But what could it be? Natalia is also worried about Barry's safety. Sloan is no better than Carl. He was a businessman. He would have some tricks up his sleeve. However, they did not know what he would do if he felt he was threatened. Natalia would certainly not risk any injury to Barry. Let me think about it again. We have basically found out the truth about everything now. What we are waiting for is a clue that can pit Carl and Sloan against each other. That way, we can make use of the past between two people and let them destroy each other. Barry had thought about this method, but he didn't have any specific ideas. After all, the interests of two men have been tied together for so many years and could not be easily separated. Natalia put her hands around his shoulder and sighed. Think again, and I'll think with you. This process was very tiring, especially after a long night of socializing. But Natalia still persevered, as long as she knew that Barry was with her and was experiencing the same things as her. Natalia would not find a reason to give up, and she pushed herself, continuing to insist. After what went on tonight, I'm wondering, besides these seemingly coincidental investments, how else are they connected? Barry held his chin and frowned tightly. At this moment, his mind was thinking about every single possibility. However, these things were not so easy to figure out. Otherwise, Carl and Sloan would not have smoothly cooperated in the dark for so many years. So apart from having the two people meet and observe the reaction, there was no other progress. The next day, while attending the event, Barry and Natalia secretly met Karsten. Magnus was busy today, so he didn't come. Karsten wiped the sweat from his forehead. It was hot in the summer. He had gone there in a hurry. Because of their identity and Barry's knowledge that he was likely to be monitored by Carl, they could only take advantage of this large-scale event to meet secretly when they were in a room with other people. Let's exchange information first. Natalia and I can basically confirm that Sloane and Carl are connected. Now we suspect that they must have evidence on each other, and we want to find out. We can only start with Sloane. Barry quickly gave all his information. Karsten frowned in embarrassment. Sloan and I have never worked with each other. In the past, I have taken the initiative to propose it, but he refused. Now I see that Sloan was afraid of getting involved with people related to the Ortez family. It doesn't matter. We'll try again. Yesterday, I observed the expressions of Carl and Sloan. They were not calm. On the contrary, Carl had a flustered look. In other words, they are both guilty. Barry opened his mouth to comfort Natalia and Karsten who were obviously disappointed. I cannot do this at the moment, so I'd like to ask you to check all the assets of Sloan, including the secret ones. 
I want to know what else there is except for what we found. Barry frowned and took a deep look at Karsten. Well, don't worry, I'll do it. Karsten quickly agreed. In fact, in terms of contacts and resources, it was obviously impossible for Barry to investigate the matter himself. If he was discovered by Carl, the consequences would be unimaginable. So Karsten was the one who had to do it. Thank you. If you need anything, you can contact me here. Barry quickly expressed his thanks. Karsten sighed heavily. I want to help you. This matter has always been troubling me as well. To tell you the truth, if this matter is not resolved, I will not be able to relax. If we work together, the truth will be uncovered. Barry comforted him. Then they went back to the large main room again, pretending that nothing had happened. Being busy with all this, Barry couldn't be as attentive as before with the project with Eric and Emily. Although he was confident in his team, Barry personally wanted to apologize to Eric. They had a video conference. Barry explained all the work that was keeping him busy and then said, So far, the progress is faster than we had originally planned, and we are ensuring the quality. Therefore, the follow-up plan may also progress. Please come over and we will talk about it in detail. Then, Barry talked about his investigation. He was worried that Eric would be dissatisfied. But after listening, Eric just raised his eyebrows and asked, Do you need any help? I don't really right now, but I will ask if I do. Barry's voice relaxed, and he showed a faint smile. Barry, don't hesitate. And if you need help with this project, you can ask me. Emily's voice was heard in the video conference room. As soon as Natalia heard her voice, she felt full of happiness, and she also smiled. Emily was such a charismatic person, and she always made people feel nice. Emily's face was full of smiles on the video call. She had Jonathan sitting in her lap. Because she was talking about business affairs, Jonathan sat obediently and did not move. He was afraid that he would cause trouble. But he was listening to their discussion of business, nodding from time to time as if he understood everything. After the business discussion was over, Emily asked with a smile, I meant what I said. If you need help, you can call me at any time. I consider you to be my friend. As she said that, Jonathan nodded. Yes, my mother sees you as friends. Uncle Barry, Aunt Natalia, please come to play with me. I'll show you my latest work, Jonathan said, and he patted his head in excitement, blaming himself for not having his painting with him to show it to them through the video. Natalia immediately cheered up. That sounds great. When I'm finished, I'll come to see you. You should remember what you said and take me to eat something delicious. That's for sure. I'll take you to the best restaurant. People need to make a reservation to go there, but Uncle Nathan likes me, so he never makes me wait. Jonathan was very proud to say that there was always a table for them at Nathan's restaurant. Natalia looked at Jonathan's pink cheeks and the dimples on his face. She felt that all of her frustration and tiredness had gone away. Jonathan was so cute. Finally, Natalia and Jonathan reluctantly bid farewell. Barry said his thanks and ended the video call. Natalia seemed to be reluctant to get off the call. After she waved her hand gently, Barry asked her with a smile, You are so reluctant to let go of Jonathan. Why don't we have a baby too? Our own will be even cuter than Jonathan. A baby? Natalia blinked. Will you be as good with it as you are with Jonathan? Barry rubbed her nose with a smile. Of course, because that'll be our own. So Natalia really began to think about this possibility. If she had her own children, her heart could be warmed by them as it had been with Jonathan. Natalia said with a smile, Forget it. For now, I just want to be with you every day. When we are finally free, we will go to many places. As for a baby, let's talk about it in a few years. Her voice was sweet and happy. Barry couldn't help but kiss her on the tip of her nose. As you like. Natalia's heart beat fast when they held each other. Although there were many bad things happening, and their investigation always ran into obstacles, Natalia always felt that she was happy when she hugged Barry. It's not that she didn't want to have a baby. She just preferred Barry. She wants to be with this man. 
After speaking with Eric, Barry quickly arranged the Sinclair Corporation's affairs. Jared was doing good, and he was relieved, so he gave him full power. Are you sure? Jared looked at his assigned task and raised his eyebrows. Report to me regularly and contact me in case of emergency. You should be able to deal with the rest. Barry said in a serious voice, and after seeing Jared's expression, he said, After finishing this, I will offer you a huge bonus. In this matter, I will treat you very well. This will be done on time, Jared said. After this discussion, Barry began to focus on the preparations for the 10th anniversary of his mother's death. After getting in touch with Barbara, Barry adjusted his ideas. The pure white would be replaced by bright colors, as would have been liked by Cheryl. Cheryl hadn't left much behind. Therefore, it was very difficult for Barry to understand her, and he couldn't ask Carl. Therefore, Barbara was the most important person for him to represent his mother. With her help, Barry was finally satisfied and finalized the plans for the ceremony. Looking at everything, Barbara wiped the corner of her eye. That's nice. If your mother knew, she would be very happy. These are all the things she liked, and this place is where she always wanted to go. I remember her saying that when you grew up. She would take you with her. When I look back, I still wonder how your mother could go like this. There are so many things she hadn't done yet. Aware of her mistake, she quickly said, I'm sorry if what I said makes you sad. I just can't. It's okay, Barbara. I want to hear more about my mother. Barry gently comforted her. Barbara smiled and looked at Barry with tears in her eyes. You and your father are not at all like each other. You are very much like your mother and your grandfather. In both appearance and temperament, you are like the Thompson family. Am I? That's good. Barry said in a low voice. He had seen the photos himself, and he did look like Cheryl. Next, he and Barbara again discussed some final details. And after sending her home, Barry drove back to the Sinclair Corporation. When he thought of his mother... Barry always recalled that night. If he had been there, would she have had a different ending? If he had been with his mother, everything would be different. Barry felt regret, guilt, and blamed himself. So on the way back, his mood was particularly heavy, especially since he had not yet found any evidence. The reason why Barry had always investigated the Ortez family was that Carl had done the same thing to them. As long as he could find the evidence regarding the Ortez family, he could certainly find something related to the Thompson family as well. However, time was running out, and Barry had to start thinking about another plan. What if there was no evidence? Now that he had come so close to the truth, he knew that Carl had caused the bankruptcy of the Ortez family and the Thompson family. As for the evidence, he bet that as long as he started to investigate, he would find out what was relevant. But Sloane had covered all the evidence up. When the time came for the big reveal, only the Sinclair Corporation would be hurt, and Carl would be released because there would be no evidence. So this plan was not good enough. Since the beginning, Barry's mind had been planning, thinking about all his next steps. He and Natalia had endured for so long that they had to seize every opportunity. Barry frowned. When he returned to the office, he saw Natalia walking in. The expression on his face suddenly began to change. His eyebrows relaxed and the corners of his mouth were raised in a relaxed smile. How did it go? Does Barbara think everything is okay? Natalia asked. She wanted to follow Barry all the time, but if they both left the Sinclair Corporation at the same time, it would only attract people's attention. So she stayed back most of the time. Barry nodded. Barbara said that my mother would like it. That's good. Natalia heaved a sigh of relief. In order to meet the taste of Cheryl, everything had been designed by Barry himself. He had not had a good rest for several days. She wanted to help, but she understood Barry. He wanted to prepare everything by himself. Therefore, she was worried. But now, seeing that Barbara was satisfied, she relaxed. By the way, Carl called and asked us to go over for dinner in the evening. What's going on? I think it's suspicious of him to invite us now. Natalia said inside. If she went on like this, 
she felt that she was going to have a nervous breakdown. It should be okay. Barry thought about it and said, He wants to test us, and he also wants to get me and him closer. The suggestion he made the last time he came back to the Sinclair Corporation was rejected, which made him realize that he was not in control. And Justin still needs to be supported, so he needs to have a good relationship with me. You say that, but in fact, every time I face Carl, the pressure is a lot. Natalia lowered her head and pushed down her resentment and anger. For Natalia, every time she saw Carl, she thought of her parents who had died. It was a pain that could not be explained. Barry touched her head gently and held her in his arms, comforting her silently. That night at the Sinclair family residence, I said last time that you were to attend the ceremony. Are you not doing as I said? Asked Carl with a face of discontent. Marie looked at him with a tight frown, confirmed that there was no one around and said, Are you sure you want me to go? I don't have the heart to face it. And Barry won't like me to intervene in his mother's affairs. Have you forgotten? She was interrupted by Carl immediately. What nonsense are you talking about? I won't forget anything because it never happened. Carl glared at Marie with a vicious stare. I have warned you. If you can't keep this matter secret, you are done. I want you to do as I say, understand? Marie never dared to disobey Carl. She has been very obedient over the years. She had no ideas of her own. But this time, Marie cannot be like that. On the one hand, she understood what Carl meant. In the future, Barry would be the core of the Sinclair Corporation. For her and Justin's sake, she had to please Barry. But on the other hand, she could not forget that she and Carl had murdered Cheryl that night. How could she forget killing someone? She was not Carl who had no conscience. Carl looked at her for a long time and his face sank. Think carefully about what I said, but remember that you have to keep the secret. I will, Marie agreed, but she could not help but think of the night in the autumn. Cheryl's health had always been bad, but it had gotten even worse. Barry was away and she had asked Carl to take Justin to his home to see it. At that time, Carl's mood was good, so he agreed to let them come over. For Marie, it was her first time to step into the Sinclair family home, and what she saw was the luxury that she yearned for. When he saw her child next to Carl, Marie felt elated. However, she and Carl did not expect that Cheryl, who had been really sick, would suddenly appear in front of them. Cheryl was pale. When she saw her, she did not show any surprise. But when she saw Justin, she took a shocked expression. Her resentment clearly appeared on her face as she was pointing to Justin and staring at Carl. What are you thinking about? Carl's scolding pulled Marie out of her memories. She wiped the cold sweat on her forehead. What had happened that night was a nightmare for her. I'll go and prepare dinner. Marie took a deep breath let her shivering body gradually calm down and quickly went to the kitchen. Barry was coming tonight. Marie didn't understand what Carl was thinking. Why should he trust Barry so much? He even seemed to compromise with Natalia for him. This was not a good sign. The more trust Carl had in Barry, the harder his future situation with Justin would be. Marie frowned in the kitchen and constantly told herself that he must think of a way to solve this problem as soon as possible. That night, Barry brought Natalia over. Because of his shame, Justin usually locked himself in his room, but this time he came down and joined everyone. Try this fish. I caught it today. Carl smiled and completely ignored Natalia. Barry nodded. It's very good. The table was full of all kinds of dishes. Carl was still sitting at the head of the table, looking to be in a good mood. Marie, as usual, sat on the side, looking at all the things she had prepared for them without saying a word. Her expression was a little nervous, especially when she looked at Barry. Justin also praised his father's fish. Isn't it delicious? Next time you'll come fishing with me. Carl smiled. Justin nodded. As long as you will take me, I will certainly go with you. This flattery was the only thing he could do now. After all, his future depended on Carl. At this time, Carl mentioned the matter of Cheryl's ceremony. 
By the way, how are the preparations for your mother's ceremony going? The time is getting close. If you have something you need, I can help you. Carl said, then sighed, pretending to be very sorry. Barry did not respond. Marie was frowning. She still couldn't understand Carl. Everything is ready, and the rest is to be arranged soon. Thank you for offering, Barry said. Carl thought very carefully. He had kept this a secret for years. Now, as long as he was attentive and natural at the mention of Cheryl, Barry would never suspect that Cheryl's death was related to him. So Carl nodded and said, We haven't had dinner together like this for a long time. It's really rare. I'm old and I begin to miss the past more and more. Natalia put down her fork. She had no appetite at all. Watching Carl act so brazen gave her a stomach ache. It was disgusting. How could Carl say all this? Yes, they had dinners together like this in the past, but they had changed a lot. Barry was no longer timid and would fight hard for what he wanted. He would openly seize everything he wanted. All this was caused by Carl. Carl said these words, but no one answered, so he felt some embarrassment. He coughed and began to talk about the company. Natalia was getting more and more discontented. She remembered how she had been tortured in the past. She also thought of her parents and Barry's mother and grandfather, who were murdered by Carl. The resentment in her heart was getting deeper and deeper, and she couldn't control herself. She glared at Carl, who was sitting at the head of the table. In this glance, there was all the resentment she had repressed. Even though Natalia quickly disguised her emotions and put on her normal expression, she was still seen by Marie. Marie frowned and her face took a surprised expression. But when she looked again, she saw that seemed to be wrong. How could she be wrong? This was a look that she would never forget. The resentment, the unwillingness, and the betrayed look were exactly the same. After that, Marie was absent-minded and uneasy. After Barry and Natalia left, she sat in the living room. What did that look mean? At night, Marie did not return to the bedroom with Carl. At this time, she needed a quiet space to carefully connect all these things in her mind because she felt that she had seen something in Natalia's eyes. At this time, Justin quietly came downstairs. Seeing that his mother was still up, he immediately asked, What's the matter? You look upset. What's going on? Marie frowned and said, I saw how Natalia looked at your father today. I feel there is something wrong. What could be wrong? Justin thought that his mother was overthinking. Natalia is different from Barry. Besides, she must really hate her father. Otherwise, she would not have wanted to attack him with a knife. It's not like you don't know about the evidence she collected. If she had exposed it, the consequences would have been unimaginable. It was not the same. Marie's facial features wrinkled together. This look was different. I could see that she really hates your father. But she should not. It was your father who took her and her mother in. And over the years, your father was kind to them. Even now, he doesn't particularly object to her being with Barry. So what is it about? Marie had a premonition that as long as she found the reason, she could turn the situation around. Justin stopped talking. He hadn't seen the look in Natalia's eyes, so he didn't know anything. Moreover, he always disliked Natalia and he was not surprised by what she could do. Wait a minute, Marie suddenly said and quickly asked. Is it possible that... Then her voice became lower and said softly, Do you know about the matter of the Ortez family? The Ortez family was very prosperous, but it suddenly went bankrupt and Pedro committed suicide. Could it be about this? Would Natalia still have such a deep hatred? If it was this, then everything could be explained clearly. Natalia knew that Carl had something to do with her father's death, so she kept collecting evidence of the crime and even tried to kill Carl with a knife after she found out. Justin didn't know anything about the past, but he still asked. What does Natalia know? What's more, does Barry know? If he knows, could he be helping Natalia take revenge? Marie carefully analyzed. 
Barry has changed and began to play tricks. He used your mistake to make Carl trust him more in order to take the Sinclair Corporation into his own hands. He also concealed Natalia's whereabouts. All this shows that he actually knows what Natalia is doing. And being together with her shows that he wants to help her get revenge. It had to be this. This way, everything could be explained clearly. After hearing this, Justin was excited. I'm going to tell my father. If father knew about it, he would certainly kick out that traitor Barry. No! Marie immediately grabbed Justin, shook her head and said, We do not have any evidence to prove that. All this is just our speculation. What if Barry denies it, and you don't know your father so well? If Carl knew that they had found out the truth about the Ortez family, he would not let it go. What now? We can't let Barry continue his plan. Justin anxiously said. He just wanted to get rid of Barry for good. Marie rubbed her forehead. Let me think about it. First of all, we have to find evidence that Barry is preparing to expose your father. This is the most important thing for us now. The next day, Madeline came to the Sinclair Corporation. This is the official statement I prepared. After it is released, there should be no official relationship between us. We will be officially unbound from each other. Madeline's actions were very quick. This official statement was prepared by her company's public relations department and revised by herself. During their separation, they were both respectful and everything was done properly. Good, you can set a time and we can both publish it simultaneously. Barry agreed. Madeline raised her eyebrows. Don't you want to look more carefully? What if I wrote something bad for you? Are you not afraid of being wronged? You would not do such a thing. Barry said simply and clearly. This statement should be officially released at noon today. Let's quickly solve this matter so I can find my own special someone. Madeline seemed to be thinking of something, and her face showed a rare helplessness. She just wanted to quickly resolve this issue. Natalia looked at her and knew that she had no feelings for Barry. Madeline, I heard that you have dealt with all your business here in the city. On the contrary, there are still a lot of things accumulated back at your company. Why do you still stay in the city? Natalia asked with a smile. After she and Madeline got familiar with each other, they dared to joke. What do you mean? Madeline did not answer the question, but her face revealed a smile. Something good must be going on, Natalia said and took Madeline's arm. Won't you tell me? Who is it? I want to know. At this time, Barry stopped working and looked at Madeline with surprise. Are you too curious? Madeline had no choice but to smile and say in a soft voice. It's a person I met by chance. I feel good getting along with him. However, it seems that he believes I'm really engaged, so he is very indifferent toward me. So I want to send this statement out quickly. So this is how it is. Natalia's smile became deeper. I wish you success. Madeline, you are so beautiful. That man must like you very much. Madeline shrugged. I hope so, but you are right. My company has a lot of things to deal with. I'll go back tomorrow. By the way, when your plan is settled, please tell me, so I can explain to him that we were just acting from the beginning to the end of this engagement. I will let you know. Barry agreed. So after they made a decision, the official statement was released at noon. For people in the upper class of the city, this statement was not surprising, because at the banquet, Barry was accompanied by another woman. Barry had chosen true love. Those who read the news expressed their regret because in their hearts, Barry and Madeline were a perfect match. However, after the announcement, Barry and Madeline had no official relationship and were no longer engaged. The cooperation between them had ended, but their friendship continued. Madeline saw the comments under the official statement while she was in the car. In the past, she would do everything to prevent this because Barry had become her obsession. But now everything has changed. It seemed that her love for Barry all these years was not real at all, but just an obsession. So now, while reading those regretful comments, Madeline could smile and feel relaxed. At least for her, there was no regret in ending this relationship. After all, she had no place in the relationship between Barry and Natalia. 
Madeline drove to the restaurant where she often went during this period of time. After parking the car, she went to her usual table. Miss Madeline, you are here. What are you going to have today? The owner was very familiar with Madeline, and he smiled to welcome her. Could I see the chef? He's not busy at this time, right? I want to talk to him about some things. Madeline said. She was a VIP there. In addition, she was generous. So the owner immediately said, I'm going to call him. About five minutes later, Madeline saw the chef walk toward her. He was dressed in white overalls, but he couldn't hide his handsomeness. He could cook all the dishes Madeline liked. I have issued an official statement. Madeline raised her head and looked at him seriously. Did you see it? I did not. A quick and concise reply. Madeline was not angry and showed a faint smile. All right, I'm going to tell you myself. I had an appointment with my ex-fiance. Both of us knew that the wedding would not take place, so we just issued a statement, canceling the engagement. So now I'm single and you... She leaned over and looked at the chef. You can stop worrying about this. The chef was still silent and looked at her seriously. Madeline raised her eyebrows. I'm leaving tomorrow. To where? Asked the chef in a deep voice. Of course I'm going back to deal with business affairs. Didn't you say that I had nothing to do all day? I'm actually very busy. So I'll give you one last chance. I'm single now. Are you sure you want to treat me like this? Madeline took a deep breath and immediately felt nervous. But the chef didn't respond. Madeline was disappointed and wanted to change the subject when she was suddenly held in the chef's arms. Before her surprised words could come out, she was stopped by a gentle kiss. Natalia, who had been busy all afternoon, was dizzy and exhausted. But today was a significant day for her. In the past, she consciously avoided such occasions. And when others asked about her relationship with Barry, she chose to avoid the subject. Because Barry was still engaged with Madeline. But now, the engagement had been officially called off. She can now openly stand by Barry's side. Next time, no matter who asked about their relationship, she would not hesitate to say that Barry was her boyfriend. Are you tired? Barry touched Natalia's head and asked softly, What do you want to have for dinner? What about Japanese? Natalia leaned into Barry's arms and they held each other's hands. The only time they could relax was during dinner together. Therefore, Natalia always cherished it. Otherwise, she would go home to eat quietly. When she was with Barry, they didn't have to talk. They would just be together. Just before they were ready to go out for dinner, Barry's mobile phone rang. He immediately answered and said in a low voice, Karsten has found some new information. Let's have a look. For such things, Natalia would never refuse, so she immediately said, I'll turn on the computer. They had asked Karsten to investigate all the companies and assets of Sloan and he had found out about all these and also found some hidden information. The time and energy consumed for this matter was a lot, especially since Karsten was very meticulous. Natalia hesitated for a moment, feeling a little relieved, but also a little uncomfortable. She was glad that her father had so many good friends who did not forget about him and wanted to help her more than 20 years later. They were here to investigate the evidence, proving that her father was framed. The computer was turned on. Barry logged into his account, opened the file from Karsten, and quickly read through it. Sloan's company and assets were more than he had expected. In addition to his famous investment company, there were many other small companies. As for the type of their business projects, they were similar to those of the Sinclair Corporation, which showed that they had been cooperating. If Carl could do this, there must be serious evidence in Sloan's hands. Here is the list of the investors in his companies. According to what Karsten found, we can see that Carl is not among them. Natalia frowned tightly and said, Would you like to see if there are any people we know in there? Natalia thought that the only possibility was that Carl did not directly put in the investment money to avoid any connection between him and Sloan. Therefore, she guessed that Carl had found someone he trusted and invested in Sloan's company through them. However, Barry rejected this possibility after looking at the files. 
No, there is no one here who has a connection to Carl. Moreover, if someone else was used, there would be trouble in the future, and a third person would be involved. I suspect that the two of them are trading in secret. Very quickly said. Do you mean that Carl did not directly use his own identity or other people to invest capital into Sloan's company? Natalia asked. Barry nodded. He was really suspicious. But Natalia asked. Are you sure? This does not sound like Carl. Can he really trust Sloan so much? If Sloan had other thoughts, wouldn't that be risky? So this confirms what we suspected before, that Sloan and Carl both have their own evidence. Their cooperation could have started with the Ortez family, followed by the Thompson family, and maybe there are many more things that we don't know about that were done by the two of them. So they must have something in their hands that can destroy each other. After hearing this, Natalia was silent for a moment, then nodded and agreed with Barry. Indeed, when it comes to matters like those, it would be really troublesome to involve a third party. But in that case, what should they do with their investigation? Natalia sighed. They couldn't find any evidence on Sloan. Where could they start? Only Carl and Sloan knew about their business. They had no way to find out about any transfer of private assets, no matter where they looked. Barry frowned and whispered. Let's look at the others. Karsten had sent them a lot of information, enough for them to focus on for a period of time. At this time, they had no appetite at all. They were absorbed in the documents. First of all, the problem was that these companies were owned by Sloan, and the projects they had done had a lot of overlap with the Sinclair Corporations. Openly, they had no cooperation. It was difficult to avoid suspicion at this point. Maybe these two people never thought they would be investigated. We can't find out anything for the time being. The accounts are all right. Sloan and Carl are really careful. How awful! Natalia was discouraged, and her mood suddenly became irritable. Very gently stroked her hair and comforted her. For us, any discovery will be out of luck, so it's normal that we haven't found anything out yet. Because these secrets have been hidden for so many years, they have had enough time to cover up all the evidence. It is very difficult to find and it is just normal that we are struggling. He should be the anxious one, but at this moment he was comforting Natalia. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I didn't control my emotions. Natalia apologized in a hurry. She couldn't do this. She couldn't make trouble for Barry at this time. Although she had her own emotions, she was determined not to let them have any impact on Barry. However, Natalia was a very emotional person. In addition to finding out the truth about her father's death, she was still subjected to Carl's presence. Her whole mentality was completely out of balance. However, she really didn't want to influence Barry with her frustration. He had already undertaken so much. Barry looked at her teary eyes, stopped working, held her in his arms and stroked her head slowly. You look so sad. Barry couldn't help but say, I'm not sad, I just feel bad for you. Natalia's voice trembled. She wanted to do more things for Barry, but now she felt like she was burdening him. Barry raised her chin and asked her to look at him. His eyes were gentle. Natalia, don't worry about me. I am here for you, understand? You are the strongest person I know. You have endured for so long and you have clearly known the truth. You are helping me to find evidence, so neither of us should feel guilty. What we should do is support each other, okay? Natalia couldn't say a word. She was holding back the tears in her eyes. But when she looked into Barry's eyes, she couldn't control herself. She hugged him tightly. Yes, the meaning of their existence was to support each other. Natalia's heart trembled, holding Barry's hand. Barry took out a paper towel and gently wiped Natalia's tears until she gradually calmed down. Then he said, Come on, let's go through this together. I have a hunch that we can find something useful tonight. Now they had no way to prove that there was any cooperation between Carl and Sloan, because there was no evidence of economic interaction between them. They needed to find out. Natalia dried her tears and nodded. Okay, I'll go through it with you. 
For Barry's sake, she had to be strong and couldn't lose her spirit. So their attention shifted to the computer screen again. Natalia took a deep breath and tried to find any useful information. To avenge her father, she had to find evidence. Natalia frowned tightly. She is looking at all the branches of Sloane's companies. When seeing one of the companies, Natalia suddenly touched Barry's arm and quickly said, Look at this. She pointed to a name on the screen. This man. I seem to have met him somewhere. Do you have any impression of him? One company had two people in charge of it. There was one person in addition to Sloane. Karsten probably saw this exception too, so he noted the details of the partner. It was Sloane's brother-in-law, whose name was Hector Howell. During this period of time, Natalia had contacted many partners of the Sinclair Corporation. However, they had already checked it. No companies under Sloane's name had any cooperation with the Sinclair Corporation. This name was familiar, but Natalia could not recall from where. Because it felt important, the more she couldn't remember, the more anxious she got. She turned pale. Calm down and think about where you've seen this name before. Barry's steady and powerful voice sounded. Natalia looked at her hands, took a deep breath, and began to think about all the work she had done during this period. Her memory was not bad. So what was it? She remembered this company. She seemed to have heard about it. As for Hector, it seemed that she had met him. Natalia suddenly opened her eyes and quickly said, I remember. She became excited and immediately took Barry's hand. I stumbled upon this company when I was doing some work. At that time, I thought its name was very interesting and it was a small company. I thought it was very strange. I checked and found that the person in charge of it was Sloane. Barry immediately frowned and realized that they had found something important this time. This Howell Cooperation was a small company that had been cooperating with the Sinclair Corporation. I'll have all the information on this Howell Corporation company checked, Barry said immediately. At this time, they cannot delay much longer. Instead of looking for Karsten, Barry made a phone call and found someone else who had been cooperating with him. He quickly said, Help me investigate the Howell Corporation. The person in charge is Hector. I want all the information quickly. After the phone call, the hearts of Barry and Natalia were pounding. Finally, they had found something. If there was no evidence again, Natalia and Barry would be discouraged. The investigation would take some time, and they were expecting the results the next morning. So Barry regained his composure and looked at Natalia. I'll take you to dinner now. We'll find out more information tomorrow morning. We'll have a good rest today, and tomorrow will be very important to us. Natalia took a look at the time. It was really late, so she nodded and went to leave the office. But as she opened the door, she saw a shadow flash by. Natalia was frightened and shouted, Who is this? Barry instantly stood in front of her. It was 10 in the evening and the whole Sinclair Corporation was empty. Barry and Natalia thought that they were the only ones left there. They didn't think that there was someone else besides them. For a moment, their hearts suddenly felt a strong uneasiness. At this time, the shadow that had flashed by knew that he could not escape. After all, they could just check the security cameras. So he came out of the darkness. Barry and Natalia saw his face, and their faces took a surprised look. Mr. Barry, Miss Natalia, have I disturbed you? I'm sorry, it just occurred to me that I had some files to take home, but I had forgotten to copy the document, so I came back. The man touched his hair and looked very calm. Barry looked at the man in front of him. He was a senior employee of the Sinclair Corporation and the person that Carl had sent to monitor his every move. He was obviously eavesdropping and had heard everything. Natalia's palms were sweating. If what they had said before was overheard, it would all be in vain. What could they do now? But as Natalia was in a dilemma, Barry said calmly, Is that so? Next time, remember to turn on the lights. Also, don't work too much. Pay attention to your health. The employee immediately nodded. You are also very busy, so I do not want to disturb you. Mr. Barry, we are lucky to have you. Barry didn't fall for such flattery. He still looked at the man. Did you drive here? 
Do you want me to take you back? The man quickly waved his hand. I drove here, so I'll go now. My wife is waiting for me at home. After saying that, the man turned around and quickly walked away. Natalia wanted to speak, but saw Barry shaking his head, so she could only suppress all of her nervousness. They both pretended to be calm and went to their car. At the moment when the door was closed, Natalia can no longer remain calm. What should we do? That man is working for Carl, right? Has he found out what we are trying to do, so he sent someone to watch our every move? She said, covered in cold sweat. The feeling of being monitored by Carl was terrible. Were they just doing useless work? Barry said in a deep voice. This man is indeed the one Carl has used to watch me before. But I can't tell who is behind him this time. If Carl really knew all our plans from the beginning and had arranged people to monitor us at all this time, he would not try to test us all those times. It doesn't make sense. This issue could affect their plans. They had to remain passive and could not rush. Barry was flustered. If it really was as Natalia guessed, then their efforts had been in vain. The truth about the Ortez family and the Thompson family would not be disclosed. On the 10th anniversary of his mother's death, how could he stand with honor? However, Barry exerted his self-control to calm himself down. I'll look into this tomorrow to see who he's been in contact with recently. Until then, we will be acting normally. Barry quickly made the decision. In addition, we now found a big thing, so fate could still be on our side. If they hadn't found out about that man, they would be in a tough situation. At least for now, they still had some initiative. Barry took Natalia's hand and whispered, We may be able to seize this opportunity. Whether this person is working for Carl or Justin, it is an opportunity for us to fight back. So it's all right. Natalia took a deep breath to relax, but her body was still tense. She hoped that this time fate really was on their side. After what happened, Natalia's stomach twitched nervously, and she didn't have any appetite. So they went to the supermarket to buy some snacks and eat at home. Natalia was too tense to eat, but thinking that Barry was hungry, she went to the kitchen and prepared something for them. At this time, neither of them had much appetite. So after eating a little, they put down their forks. They were both worried. Natalia leaned on Barry's shoulder and whispered, When we're finished with this, shall we go away? Only the two of us, to relax and have fun. How about going to Iceland? Barry said. Natalia looked at him in surprise. Have you thought about this already? Barry lowered his eyes. Although he still had a smile on his face, he was sentimental. It was my mother who planned to take me there, but there was no opportunity. I still want to go there for her. At this time, Natalia held his hand, and their fingers intertwined. I'll go with you. When we're finished, we should leave immediately. Natalia raised her face and showed a bright smile. Barry took a serious look at her and bowed his head to kiss her lips. It's hard, but they had each other. At night, Natalia was lying in Barry's arms feeling his temperature. She smiled and said, Do you remember when my mother died and you came back from abroad? I wanted to be cold to you, but the moment when I saw you, all my persistence was gone. I just wanted to hide in your arms and cry. She had loved Barry for a long time. From the moment she met Barry, she was helped by Barry in school, and she was in love with him. Now that she recalled these memories, they lit up her dark heart. Barry gently stroked Natalia's hair, and then he thought of the past, regretting that he had been too far away. So when he saw Natalia again, she was crying. Just like before, she was held in his arms. Natalia raised her head, looked at Barry's eyes, and asked softly, Do you know that? Actually, I had gone abroad to find you. When? Barry suddenly asked. Why did I never know about this? Natalia smiled. I saw you, but I didn't talk to you. Just watched you pass by. She seemed to have been depressing her pain for a long time. The pressure her mother had put on her was so heavy that she had forced herself to think of revenge every day. Justin always liked to cause her trouble, and Marie always hated her. She had gone to the study, but she could no longer see Barry sitting there. In this oppressive environment, Natalia just wants to see Barry. She wanted to know how he had been. 
So she bought a ticket, told her mother that she was going on a school trip, and then she boarded that plane by herself. When she arrived, because she didn't speak the language, it took a lot of time to find the school where Barry was studying. Natalia did not know how to describe her mood at that time, and it was so complicated. She wanted to see Barry, and at the same time, she was afraid of him. She didn't know what she was afraid of, or what she expected. With such a mood, Natalia waited at the school gate for hours, and saw person after person come and go. When she had almost lost hope, she finally saw Barry's figure. Just when she felt she had missed him, Barry finally appeared. But at that moment, Natalia lost the courage to talk to him. She saw Barry's group of friends. He was walking in the front like their leader. Barry was still dazzling. Natalia suddenly realized that she was the only one who had a bad life. It was she who could not let go of him. For her, Barry was like a savior, the one who held her in his arms. But for Barry, she was nothing. So that day, Natalia watched Barry pass her by and hid her face when he turned around. She had cried and finally left, feeling lost. After returning home, she had to face her mother's illness, and then her death, and she had no time to think about those sad things. Barry frowned. Why didn't you call me? When he thought of Natalia waiting for him alone, his heart was aching. Natalia helplessly looked at him. You didn't give me your number. I have hated you for a long time because of this, but I couldn't help but forgive you. Now that he was back, she was fulfilled. As long as Barry was there, she would be okay, but she still could not rest assured with all the threats to their plans. Natalia was very aggrieved, so she punched Barry's chest. I had given you my number. Barry sat up and looked very serious. I couldn't contact you, so I wrote down my mobile number and some words I had to say and gave it to your mother. At that time, Natalia had been avoiding him. When he was about to leave, he could not find her and could not say what he wanted to say. Therefore, before leaving, Barry gave his mobile phone number to Natalia's mother and asked her to transfer it to Natalia. Is that so? Natalia obviously was hearing this for the first time. Her expression was shocked. I didn't receive it. Did you give it to my mother? The two of them immediately understood what was going on. Natalia's mother hated everyone in the Sinclair family, even the innocent Barry. How could she let her daughter connect to Barry? Therefore, she did not give Natalia his number or his letter. So, what did you want to tell me? Natalia held her breath, her eyes fixed on Barry, eager to know the answer. Barry looked at her seriously. It seemed that the two of them had returned to the past. His arms held Natalia and he said in a low voice, I wanted to tell you to wait for me. Wait for me to come back. He wanted to promise that he wouldn't give up and when he came back it would all be okay. He would be powerful and mature. At that time he would protect her. Everything fell into place. Natalia's eyes were teary again. It turns out that she was not the only one who was in love. Barry didn't just leave her, wanting to cut off the connection between them. It was just a misunderstanding. Natalia leaned into Barry's arm, sobbing. Barry's hand gently stroked her back, and his heart was also aching. As long as he thought that Natalia was sad because of his departure, he regretted his decision. If time could go back, he would not leave. He would stay with Natalia and experience everything with her. He wanted to make up for the past. Tell me, were you happy there? What did you do every day? What did you like to eat? Did you miss me? Natalia asked softly. She wanted to make up for that time. Barry said softly, I didn't seem to be particularly happy. I was either in class or studying every day. I like to eat at the Chinese restaurant near the school. He said and looked up at Natalia. I missed you. I missed you very much. I missed you every day. When I encounter something new, I want to experience it with you. When eating something delicious, I would think that if you were with me to eat it together, you would definitely smile brightly. Natalia looked at Barry seriously. All her love was coming out. It was turbulent and violent and it couldn't be controlled at all. Their lips were locked together. 
This kiss was gentle. Natalia closed her eyes and felt the tender kiss. Barry's hand gently stroked her body, and she was shivering. She was wishing for this moment to last forever. They kissed each other intimately, and Natalia began to respond. Their bodies were entangled, and Natalia began to tremble. She blushed. The next day, when Barry and Natalia went to the company, they met the man they had seen last night in the elevator. He was obviously nervous when he saw them, but the two of them were very calm, standing at the elevator entrance, and they only slightly nodded to say hello. Mr. Barry, Miss Natalia, you worked so late last night, and you are in so early today? By the way, the work I came to get last night is ready. I'll send them to you later. The man relieved his tension with a smile. Barry nodded. Good, I'll get back to you after I read it. The man quickly smiled and got out of the elevator. He went to a place where there was no one around him. He cautiously took out his mobile phone. It's me. I was almost caught last night. Fortunately, I found an excuse to cover things up. Don't worry, I'm sure I haven't been discovered because we met again just now. Their attitude was very calm, and they didn't show any suspicion in me. Yes, they're investigating something. I didn't hear the details. Well, I'll follow them closely so you can rest assured. After hanging up, the man quickly put back his mobile phone, straightened out his clothes, and walked towards his office. At this time, Barry had understood what was going on. You see, although this person was working for Carl before, after the last incident, he has been working for Justin. Barry frowned. Now Justin posed a much bigger threat than Carl. But now there was another question. What had Justin discovered? And what had that man heard last night? Was this surveillance going on from the very beginning? Or did Justin seek someone to watch him after he understood something was wrong? Barry frowned. Maybe he's been sending this man to follow us all along. Justin has not given up his plan, so he is trying to find out what is happening and drive me out of the Sinclair Corporation. At present, this was the best possibility because it meant that Justin had no idea what they were doing. But Natalia shook her head and said quickly, No, it's not like this. She remembered that night when the resentment in her heart could not be concealed and she had given Carl a vicious look. Although she quickly controlled herself, after that glance, she saw a look of amazement and suspicion on Marie's face. At that time, she did not know whether Marie had seen her or not. Even if she had, if she was fussy and cautious, she would only arouse more suspicion. Later, other things came up, and Natalia forgot about it. Now that she thought about it, maybe it was not a coincidence that Justin was having someone to watch them at this time point. It was because he was suspecting something. It's all my fault. I shouldn't have lost control of my emotions. Marie saw my look. They must have suspected something since they sent someone to follow us. What should we do? It seems that we are in trouble. Natalia was suddenly nervous. At this critical time, she had made such a mistake, and their plan could be discovered by Justin and Marie. Wasn't that like falling into their trap? Maybe we are thinking too much. According to my understanding of Carl, he would not tell Marie what he did to the Ortez family. That is to say, she might not know about this matter. Of course, even if she found out, Justin would not know that we have discovered it. So as long as we are careful, we don't have to be afraid of them. Barry said in a low voice. He had already made plans in his heart. Of course, if Marie and Justin knew nothing about his plans, it would be the best. Unfortunately, they soon got some bad news. In the morning, Karsten called from an unknown number. Justin took a look around him. They rarely chose to call each other. Most of the time, they would meet in some secluded place, or they would meet under the cover of public events. So when Karsten called him, Barry's intuition was that something bad had happened. Barry, can you talk? What can I do for you? Karsten sighed. What's going on with Justin? I heard from Magnus that he seems to be inquiring about the affairs of the Ortez family. Although he is doing it very discreetly, the person he had a word with happens to be a good friend of Magnus and also had a good friendship with Pedro at that time. You know about the Ortez family. The man told Magnus he was from the Sinclair Corporation, and he had the nerve to inquire about the Ortez family. I know about this. Justin must have found out that Natalia and I are investigating the matter of the Ortez family. 
After Barry said this, Natalia's face turned pale. What do we do now? The less people that know about this matter, the better. But now Justin knows about it. What should we do if he tells Carl? Karsten didn't care about his own safety, or the consequences if he was discovered. He was only worried that he might not be able to find out the truth about the Ortez family. Barry rubbed his brows. I need a little time. This was an accident, so I did not plan for it. But don't be nervous. Justin is not a powerful person. He seems to have just begun to investigate, and you have already found out about it. This proves that he knows, but he hasn't told Carl. This is good news for us. If Justin knew about it, he should immediately have told Carl about their plan. But now, Carl obviously did not know about this matter. Justin planned to find out what they were doing. And then what? Threaten them? Barry couldn't guess what Justin was thinking. He could only say, I'll investigate the rest of it. As for Justin, please let me know more about what he has been doing lately. I want to know his every move. Only in this way can we know what he really intends to do. Karsten agreed and then hung up the phone. The atmosphere suddenly became stiff. Natalia folded her arms over her chest with a pale face. She knew that she had made a big mistake this time. How could she stare at Carl that way? Why couldn't she control herself? Now their plan was discovered by Marie and Justin. If that man had really heard them last night, he would have told Justin everything they had discovered. The more she thought about it, the more desperate Natalia got. Don't worry so much. You didn't mean to do anything wrong. Now we have to find out what Justin is planning. I have an idea. Barry took a deep look at Natalia and said in a low voice, I always wondered, even if I discovered the financial connection between Sloane and Carl, what could I do? This has nothing to do with the Ortez family. Maybe this is my chance. Natalia looked at him and wanted to know if he was just comforting her. Barry's expression was very calm, and his eyes were shining. It seemed that he really had an idea. On the other side, as soon as Justin received the news, he immediately reported to Marie. Mom, those two are really planning something. They don't go home, but they stay in the office in the middle of the night to discuss. What's going on? Justin said quickly, The man I hired has reported to me. Barry didn't find out about him. Are you sure? Marie was not at ease and said, You cannot forget what happened with Jared. If it wasn't for him, we would not have suffered such a big loss. Hearing of Jared, Justin was full of anger, but this time he was obviously more confident. You can rest assured, Mom. This time it is not the same. This man is on Father's side. Before I entered the Sinclair Corporation, Father asked him to take care of me. I thought he was not bad, so I helped him to pay off his debts. Can betray me? No, but be careful. Marie frowned. You should keep a low profile when you inquire about the Ortez family. You must not be discovered by your father. If he knew we were doing this, he would not spare us. Justin nodded and he understood. He accepted his mother's advice, but he wanted to know what had happened with the Ortez family and whether Barry and Natalia were planning anything. After he found evidence, he would then use Carl to drive Barry out of the Sinclair Corporation. After all, how could Carl tolerate something like this? So this time, he was very careful, and his mother was involved all along the process. Justin had no confidence in himself, but he still believed in his mother's abilities. I have been looking for someone to secretly investigate the affairs of the Ortez family. It is strange that although the Ortez family was so powerful, no information can be found about them, and I don't know what Barry has found out. Justin held his chin. Let that man keep on monitoring and tell us whatever he finds out. Marie suddenly became serious. We can't rush. We should wait for the information first and then think about how we should use it. It is likely that this would be their last confrontation with Barry and Marie did not want to lose because if they lost, they would have no future. On the other hand, all the information about Howell Corporation that Barry had gathered was in folders. Can we talk about it in the company? Since the last incident, Natalia felt unsafe to talk in the office. She always thought that they were being watched. I've asked people to search the whole office. 
there's no recorder or monitor in here. Barry said, as for the computer in my hands, it's safe. No matter whether Carl or Justin want to spy on us, as long as we are in this office, they can't do anything. But be careful when you go outside. After all, we don't know how many people Justin has hired. Well, I'll be careful. Natalia agreed, and her brows were tightly knit together. It was her own mistake that had led to them being discovered by Justin. Therefore, she was more careful than before, and was also very nervous. Come and see. Barry took her hand and comforted her in silence. Their attention then concentrated on the computer screen. This Howell Corporation company was famous in the city. Of course, so was Hector himself. The information about him was not very good. Barry had obtained the transaction records proving the cooperation between the Sinclair and the Howell Corporation. As he went through them, his brows became more and more furrowed. These are all simple collaborations, but why was the Howell Corporation? Natalia didn't understand. Was Carl so generous that he even wanted to support Sloane's brother-in-law? Obviously, Carl was not a saint, so there must be something they were not thinking of. Barry took his eyes off the computer screen. What are you thinking of? Natalia asked. This is a fake company. You see, these discussions were not necessary at all. At the same time, the Sinclair Corporation got the same resources from other companies, and at a better price. Moreover, all the projects regarding the Howell Corporation were carried out by Carl and his team. So the purpose of the Howell Corporation's existence was to let Carl transfer funds to Sloan. Barry said quickly, The Howell Corporation basically has no other activity except the cooperation with the Sinclair Corporation. But because the company was small and Carl was very smart, they had not been found. Did we find something important? Natalia was excited immediately. Barry nodded. This should be the way they have been trading capital. As for this Hector, I'm afraid that he has this company under his control. And now? What are we going to do? Natalia took a deep breath. She always felt that what they had to face next would be difficult, because all these things had been discovered, and Justin was getting aggressive. They had to fight against time. Even if we have discovered this... There is no connection between these things and the matter of the Ortez family. What can we achieve if we expose the connection between Sloane and Carl? What's more, this company is legal on the surface. At most, it is a transfer of financial assets. Carl will have a way to justify this. Barry frowned and thought of this contradictory issue before him. Even if they had evidence against Carl, it had nothing to do with the Thompson and the Ortez family. What could they do? In the end, his and Natalia's goal was to expose the truth. Both the Ortez family and the Thompson families should be avenged, and Carl should suffer his punishment. When Natalia heard this, she was a little discouraged. That was the truth. What could be done even though they had discovered the transactions of these people? They still lacked the proof that they needed. Barry held her hand. You have done a great job. If it wasn't for you, we would not have grasped this. Fortunately, you spotted it. You found the evidence yourself. Natalia was not convinced. But leave the rest to me. Barry looked at her seriously. You have found the most important thing. I will use this evidence to carry on. I will not let you down. Natalia's lips trembled. She was almost in tears. She buried her head in Barry's arms and cried silently. She felt like her father had shown them the way. Natalia... I know you feel sorry because Marie found out about us, but you shouldn't. Barry helped Natalia up and looked at her. You have done very well. No one can always control their feelings. Besides, the person in front of you was your father's murderer and the one who destroyed your family. You can't get revenge and you even had to sit there talking to him. It was cruel to you and I understand. Barry's eyes showed a look of affection and he said softly, Don't feel guilty. Now you and I have to be completely focused. Every decision we make will affect the success of our plan. Natalia, don't worry. Don't feel guilty. He gently stroked Natalia's hair. His eyes were gentle like his tone. Natalia was crying, and her shoulders were shaking violently. Ever since she realized Justin had hired someone to watch them, 
she had felt uneasy. She always felt that something was wrong and worried that their plan would be destroyed by her mistake. But now Barry, who was obviously also affected, was comforting her. I'm sorry. Natalia couldn't say a word. Barry held her in his arms and his tone was very gentle. Don't worry. I'm here. No matter what happens, we'll face it together. He said that gently, kissing Natalia's cheek, smiling and saying, You are great, better than anyone else. Trust me. After being comforted by Barry, Natalia finally calmed down. She slowly wiped the tears from her face and whispered, Am I really as good as you said? You're just comforting me, aren't you? When she said that, she felt like she fell when she had first met Barry. Her tears were uncontrollable. With a tissue in his hand, Barry took a kind expression. I can't even express how great you are. Natalia chuckled and leaned in Barry's arms. The tears on her face had been wiped away, and now only a happy smile was left. Now Barry needed time to figure out how to connect all the evidence that they had gathered with the Ortez and the Thompson family. But before that, he visited the place he had prepared for the 10th anniversary of his mother's death. He had prepared everything and had hired the best company in the city to decorate the venue for the ceremony. Today was the day everything was supposed to be ready, so he took Natalia and rushed over. Unexpectedly, Carl, who also got the news, went to the auditorium with Marie. Barry was almost unable to control his expression, but in the end, he just looked at them with a straight face and wanted to know what their purpose for going there was. I heard that everything has been arranged, we came to have a look, Carl said. Marie looked around and said in a low voice, This is really beautiful. Your mother would be happy. Barry was silent and wanted to ask sarcastically if they ever cared about what his mother liked. If Carl really remembers Cheryl, how could he bring Marie here? Maybe Barry's expression was too dark because Carl quickly said with a smile, Marie just wants to help. Does she? Barry asked coldly. After this, the atmosphere directly became stiff, and Carl did not respond. Marie stood aside, embarrassed. She had not felt guilty for so many years about Cheryl. However, she was now unable to face Barry. She was not like Carl who could attend such an occasion with a straight face and no shame. Today she hadn't intended to come, but Carl was adamant, so she was forced to go with him. As a result, Barry was extremely dissatisfied. I'll go and see what's going on around here and let you two talk. Marie quickly found an excuse to leave. She didn't want to stay there. She was embarrassed. If the situation went on like this, Carl would vent all his anger on her. Marie left quickly. After she left, Carl realized that this decision was wrong and he reluctantly said, Are these decorations your own design? Barry said, Yes, I consulted a lot of people. It is very much in your mother's style. She loved these colors. Carl said with some emotion, and then began to look around. You gave me a list of people to invite. Don't worry, I found them all and they promised to come. Your mother is well remembered. Carl also wanted to get on Barry's good side. After all, it was a matter of honor for his son to pay his respects to his mother on the 10th anniversary of her death. Good. Barry couldn't even bring himself to thank Carl. Then they inspected the hall together. Barry had done a lot of hard work. He arranged and searched for the designs and all the details. Although his mother couldn't see all this, Barry's heart trembled when he thought of what he was going to do. Natalia noticed the change in his mood and took his hand. Since Marie had seen her emotions exposed last time, Natalia has been trying to control herself, so she had kept a lower profile than usual. From Carl's arrival to then, she had not said a word, but she was closely watching Barry to step up if he needed her. On the other side, Marie went to the area where all the guests had gathered. She felt her heart beating fast and took a deep breath. Over the years, she had been avoiding all matters related to Cheryl, but she could not avoid being brought to this place. She sat down and tried to control her emotions, but suddenly she saw a picture of Cheryl in front of her. In the photo, Cheryl was smiling brightly. She had a unique and elegant look, 
Therefore, the photo could still make people feel the beauty of this woman. Marie was mesmerized. She looked at Cheryl's innocent eyes. At this moment, she seemed to be staring at her, just like she had been that night. Cheryl had opened her eyes and looked at her. No, no! Marie quickly covered her eyes, but Cheryl's eyes were still looking at her in her mind. No matter how she tried to hide, those eyes were still staring at her, never letting her go. I didn't want to do it. You're dead. Get out of here. Marie shouted loudly and ran away in confusion. In her distress, she didn't notice that after she left, Natalia frowned and came out of the shadows.